uh, first race out we, uh, we got a good start and uh, the crew work today on our boat was fantastic. We got to the first mark first and were able to hold on to the lead throughout the first race which was really pleasing for us, got us off to a good start for the day and uh, certainly gave our crew some confidence. We had a good start but we somehow got a bit caught up and I think on the first lap we were about third or fourth then we worked our way back up to second uh, but then I made a big mistake on the top mark on the last lap, uh, got a little bit too close to one of the boats on the tack and uh, it was as, as it was around the top mark I had to do a, a two turn penalty, 720, so that was very costly so we went from a potential second back to six in that race. So, Bit of a pity, but uh, that happens. We started off the first race with the second, and then uh, I think we ended up having a third and a fourth, so we probably went the wrong way throughout the day, but uh, no, it was nice. We, we didn't really know where we were going to be standing coming into the event, so to get off on the right foot in, in the windy conditions was really positive for our crew. And we've got a few little things that we've identified over today that we can build on going into tomorrow. So for us, great, great results. After the aborted uh, start on the first race three, uh, which was general recall, we got away pretty well. Um, we were sort of mid-line, uh, uh, but we were pretty happy with our speed and uh, we managed to just have a really quick boat um, most of the time and just stayed in front. I think we were in front the whole race. Um, we were surprised that um, State Master came back at us because we had a very good lead on them on the rounding on the first lap. And we thought, okay, well, that should get us um, get us away. But in fact, they caught up to us again, and we we're very close. And we had a little incident on the way up there. You know, Martin was getting a bit excited about a lee bow that we did on them, a little bit too close for his comfort, um, and a bit of a gesticulation. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we ended up keeping our gap and 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 won the race. So we were pretty happy with that. And the, the boys did a great job to um, keep the boat fast, and and uh, it was just a pleasure to sail. It was a really nice, nice wind and nice, uh, nice water sailing. Today was why you like to sail far 40s. The racing was fantastically close, and uh, down here Tasmania has really turned it on for us. It actually had nice conditions, good little sea breeze, and the racing was technically challenging, but uh, it gave options to everybody. And uh, yeah, I think at the end of the day, if you can come away being semi somewhat consistent, and I think that's what the regatta leaders have done, then it really will pay big dividends going into tomorrow. Fantastic. I mean, it's wonderful to be in Hobart. What a beautiful part of the world to sail on the Derwent. Uh, you couldn't ask for better. The conditions today were tricky but uh, fantastic and fair. Uh, really enjoyed sailing today. Thanks to Aberdeen Asset Management for enabling this sort of far 40 racing to be happening in Australia. Uh, they're just such great one design racing, the rules are so strict and everybody's boat has to really st stick to very strict one design rules. So the boats are identical, so the boat that wins is the crew that sails the best on the day and I think that reward of, of knowing that you've sailed the boat well um, is, is, is a great satisfaction. They're very quick and, and they are um, got a lot of power in their rig and um, they're light and they're manoeuvrable um, and you know they've got the thing about the boat is that it keeps within a certain speed all the time, so you're never getting too far away from the competition. So you end up at the top mark and everybody's there together, which is fantastic sailing. I love it. The nice thing about the Far 40 class is that you know, we, we are very um, you know, competitive on the water, but on the dock we're good friends. And so it's a camaraderie, it's a great close uh, racing, and there's a certain prestige with the class too as well. Um, we have the you know, world class. Um, you know, tacticians at sailwaters and crews. They all love this racing and they, you know, the first to say that this is, you know, the, one of the best racing in the world. So, you know, that gives you a buzz to be involved with that as well. Oh, race 4 was very special, we won race 4, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, it was a light uh, uh, weather race, uh, we won the start and uh, was leading up the first beat. But we could see the wind fading uh, and the boats catching up to us very quickly at the top mark and the wind died out completely. And virtually the whole fleet passed for us um, and I guess you get used to those type of things. But uh, 
We um, have a theory of you know, when the breeze dies, we call it hot rocks, which means to stay close to the shore. And we picked up a slightly better breeze and sailed through the fleet to win the race. So that was very exciting for us. Uh, and it does, uh, you know, put a smile on your face. Winners are winners. Uh, the next race, the breeze was good and steady, and uh, we, uh, I think we were about fourth around the bottom mark the first time, and uh, we fought our way back through, and we ended up uh, uh, getting past Transfusion at the top mark the second time round when they just had a little problem uh, with their kite set, and uh, they left us up, but we, we got around them, and uh, we were able to hold on to win that race, so that sort of set up a really good last race scenario. So the last race was tricky, you know, we really needed to go uh, become first and voodoo third or us second and voodoo fourth. Got a good start, got a fabulous start actually, we were right on the nail and uh, had really quite good speed. But ultimately, you know, we had, um, we thought we just got to try to win the race and then hopefully what unfolds is the other guys in the fleet can do something um, against voodoo to keep them behind us. And that's what happened because Andrew Hun. Uh, the partner of Lloyd Clark uh, ended up beating him. Wasn't to be, um, but I guess we would have uh, taken the result of being beaten on a countback by the world champions at the beginning of the regatta. In the end, we actually only won on countback, remember, so that just shows you the quality of this fleet. I just think that the Tasmanian fleet have got uh, wonderful skills and they're quick boats, and uh, you know, we do a lot of sailing around the world and uh, been in a few international regattas and I've got to say this, this fleet is just right up there with, with all the fleets I've, I've sailed against around the world. This is the first time I've been down to Tasmania uh, for, a, for a Far 40 regatta and it's been fantastic, the best. In fact, uh, we're comparing it to places like Porto Cervo and, and Miami. It's, it's a great water to sail on and great, great views everywhere, so we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Just a fantastic series that Aberdeen Asset management are sponsoring to put on up and down the east coast of Australia. So we're really looking forward to uh, the Queensland, Tassie and New South Wales championships and the national championship series now.